All right. I have here a Bible. Brad, wait. I have here in my hands what is known as the Henry Morris Study Bible. If you don't know who Henry Morris is, he was someone who defended creation, went about to prove the uh, um, literal six day creation uh, that it's, um, you know, was the first day, the second day, you know, 24 hour period, that kind of thing. But um, he had, he had made, and look, look at the size of this thing, okay? Look at the size of this thing. This thing would stop a knife, okay? Uh, this thing would probably stop a 357 hollow point bullet, okay? Uh, I'm doing this because a while ago I was I had watched a video done by Brother Peter Coppola, and he had in one of the comments of his videos had made a comment about the Henry Morris Study Bible. Now, in the one video that I had made earlier today about the two wisdoms, okay. The wisdom that is of the earth, sensual, devilish, and the wisdom that comes from God. And the spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. And, um, you know, you pray unto the Lord to reveal um, truth unto you through the scriptures, okay? And he, he will reveal truth unto you, okay? And give you wisdom, understanding, and knowledge of the scriptures. Um... When I first got saved, and when you get first, when you first get saved, uh, if you are genuinely saved and born again, you're hungry, you're thirsty, you want to know more, more, more. You wanna, you wanna get all that you can <laughs> right now. It doesn't work like that, brethren. These things take time. Yes, the Lord can reveal to you many things within a short period of time. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. But these things do take time. And we are to study to show ourselves approved unto God, to be a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? Yes. But see what happens with when you go into the direction of a study Bible, you have to remember something. Number one, if you're using a study Bible that has the authorized version of the scriptures, the text of the King James scriptures, the scriptures themselves are inspired, inerrant, perfect, okay, Again, by inspiration. The study notes are hardly inspired. Also, the cross-references that some of these study Bibles have are not inspired all as well. Now, I don't outwardly recommend to anybody a study Bible. I really don't. Um, Henry Morris here, <laughs> I'm going to show you a few things, um, attacks the text of Scripture. And also, he does something. He does something also, which I'm going to share with you. Something very sinister. C.I. Schofield, okay, the C.I. Schofield Study Bible with the 1917 notes, okay. You all know if you've watched any of my videos, you all know that I have a Schofield Study Bible that has the 1917 notes. Schofield also um, puts into question the text. But the thing about the Schofield Study Bible is that he, number one, he teaches dispensationalism. He makes in his notes efforts 
to um, about he makes efforts to shoo rightly dividing the word of truth, being dispensational, that things are different um, within the dispensations as far as salvation is concerned. Okay? That is the one thing about the Schofield Study Bible. He does question the text. He even makes reference to Sinaiticus and Vaticanus. Yes, he does. But also, too, the thing about Schofield is he rightly names Catholicism, the papacy. Okay? He rightly does that. Okay, Brother Brian Denlinger uh, several years ago did a a video about the study Bibles, which one he would recommend. Um, Schofield study Bible is, I, like I said, I, I do not recommend a study Bible, but if I were pressed, if I were pressed, it's like, Brett, okay, I, I know you don't recommend one, but if you were to, you know, you know how some people get, it's like, okay, yeah, but... <laughs> If you would, if somebody who is a babe in Christ, if they were to read the notes within the Schofield Study Bible, where he questions the text, that would put doubt in the ba in the babe's uh, faith about the text. But there again, the other thing is the notes in Schofield point to the truth of dispensationalism. And also, the notes directly point to the papacy, the Vatican. I... The only one that I ever would truly be like, uh -huh, okay okay with would be the Schofield Study Bible. That's the only one. Well, well what, about, what about Ruckman? You got 300 bucks? You know, if I'm going to spend 300 bucks on a, on a copy of the scriptures, I want to get a Cambridge. Okay? With the Ruckman um, Study Bible, you're mostly buying the name. Okay? You are mostly buying the name. Um, as Brother Brian pointed out, the Ruckman Study Bible does uplift the scriptures, yes. But also, too, the one thing you got to remember, the modern Ruckmanite camp, they done gone crazy. <laughs> and they're all about the Do-Re-Mi. Okay? They're all about the Do-Re-Mi. Okay? But more specifically, let's let's get to this. This uh, I'm going to show you something in this Henry Morris Study Bible. Okay, I'm going to be reading the introduction, a part of the introduction of the Henry Morris Study Bible. And um, like I said, I don't recommend the Study Bible. A study Bible. I recommend the scriptures. And you pray unto the Lord to reveal truth unto you. And wait on him and he will. Then again, if someone is absolutely, come on, what? what? You, you, you don't recommend any of them? None of them? I, I can't comment on that, uh, what is it called? The um, chain one. Oh, the Thompson chain reference. That's what it is. I can't comment on that because I don't have that. Okay? I can't comment on that. Um, the Rainbow Study Bible, like what uh, Brother Brian had, um, I did have a copy of that, but I got rid of it right away. Um, can't comment on that. Okay? Like I said, the Schofield... But there again, like I said, if you are truly saved and born again, the Spirit of Truth, He will guide you into all truth. Okay? 
ask him to reveal truth unto you through the scripture. And wait on him until he does. Okay? But here about this specific study Bible, I want to read you something. Okay? Now, he uses the authorized version of the scripture. And what I have looked at in this, um, the, the correct punctualization, the capitalization thus far that I've looked at is accurate. But here's a warning in the introduction, right away, okay? <clears throat> here's a part of the introduction into the Henry Morris Study Bible. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 3.16 This was the testimony of the great theologian, philosopher, and brilliant intellectual, the Apostle Paul. Yeah, warning right there. Warning right there, okay? Near the end of his life, he was referring, of course, to the Old Testament. And it was his considered conviction that literally all scripture is God breathed. Now right there, right there, that ought to be giving you, whoa, red flags, warnings. Okay? His colleague, the Apostle Peter, likewise assures us, assures us that in writing these Old Testament scriptures, Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. 2 Peter 1.21 Like Paul, Peter made this affirmation shortly before he was martyred for his faith. Men like Paul and Peter would surely not be willing to die for a faith they knew to be false or even doubtful. Most importantly of all, this was the sure teaching of the Lord Jesus himself. The scripture cannot be broken. He said, John 10, 35. Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Matthew 5, 18. There is no doubt that Christ and the apostles all believed the Old Testament scriptures to be divinely inspired, infallible, inerrant, authoritative, written word of God. And he capitalizes the W there. Seven times within the authorized version of the scriptures, seven times is there a capital W word, and it's all referring unto the Lord Jesus Christ. So you have a problem right there, okay? <clears throat> they quoted from it and referred to it profusely, always with absolute confidence in its accuracy and integrity, okay? Consequently, the notes in the Henry Moore Study Bible are all based on the same premise. In the notes, in the notes, an attempt is made to support this premise and its implications. Wherever there may be a question about it, as well as to help clarify the meaning of the text, whenever it seems appropriate, the notes, of course, are not infallible and are only offered in an attempt to be helpful to the Bible reader to, in understanding, defending, and teaching the Bible itself. Now, hold on to your hats. Get ready for this. Furthermore, verbatim. Furthermore, no English translation of the Bible is perfect. Verbatim. Though it is my conviction that the so-called King James Version comes closest to that ideal. And neither is any specific Hebrew manuscript of the text. The doctrine of inerrant inspiration applies only to the original writings.
<laughs> yeah. The originals. Called the autographs of Moses, David, and the other authors of the canon of the canonical Old Testament books. These original autographs, of course, have long vanished. In fact, it is just as well that they have four, otherwise men would have made idols out of them. But we still can have strong confidence in the accurate preservation of the original text. But yet, there again, no English translation of the Bible is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. Now, I want to show you a few things. Now, this has end of verse reference. Well, the Schofield has center column. Center column. Um, the one thing about these end of verse references, let me let me find one for you. For example, uh, these end of verse um, references, there are little like letters or asterisks, but at the end of the verse, he gives an alternate reading for a word. So what that does is, if you're a babe in Christ and you have this, okay, the end of verse reference to another portion of scripture, okay, but they he puts the alternate alternate rendering of what this could this word could mean. Yea, hath God said right after the verse, okay. Let me give you an example. Reading from First Timothy in this thing. Chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. Now, check this out. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. Check this out. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Because I'm going to do something. Just to demonstrate something to you. Okay? I'm demonstrating something to you. I command... I command this, I command, uh, wait, 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 where is it? He says, it says, okay, this charge I commit unto thee, Timothy, my, uh, this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy. And right here it says, command. This I command unto thee, or something like that. See, let me, let me show you. Okay, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. See where my finger is? He puts, Yea, hath God said, right in the text there. This charge I commit unto thee. This command I commit unto thee. Yea, hath God said, right there. And in verse 19, Holding faith and a good conscience, which some put away, Concerning the faith have made shipwreck, have made shipwreck. But he has a T and a T here that says, which some have rejected concerning the faith have suffered shipwreck. He puts that right after the verse, questioning the verse. Right there within the text. Okay? Schofield does that, but he leaves the text alone at the very least. Okay, you can go ahead and look. If you have a Schofield uh, 1917 uh, old Schofield study Bible, stay away from the Schofield 3. That's the one where they change the text. Okay, it's the Schofield 3 that does that, not the original. The original Schofield, yes, he questions the text, uh, mentions... Um, oldest and best. Yes, he does. But he leaves the text alone. Okay? The actual text. This study Bible puts the yea hath God said right after the verse. Very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Okay? But now I want to show you something very sinister. 
very sinister. The, the note in Revelation chapter 17. Now, if you have a Schofield study Bible, in Revelation chapter 17, his note on um, verse 5, he clearly points to the papacy. Schofield does in his study note on, excuse me, beg your pardon, in Revelation chapter 17, verse 5, okay? He clearly points to the papacy. Schofield does, okay? But, check this out in this Henry Morris study Bible. Dear friend, if, you are, if this is something that you are using daily, or even checking for reference, I, my, my school field that I have is, you know, in the living room. Well, I, I took it out of the living room and put it in storage, okay? But I, I don't use the, I don't look at the notes myself personally. I don't do that. I don't do that, okay? But this, this, if you're using this, don't. Let's read verse 5 in Revelation chapter 17. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And if you were to continue reading Revelation chapter 17, but hello, it's Rome, it's Catholicism, it's the papacy. Okay, come on. Even the Jesuits know that. That Revelation chapter 17 is fingering the papacy. Why do you think they hate the scriptures? Okay? But note this. Get a load of this. Here is the note on... <laughs> Revelation chapter 17, verse 5. Babylon the Great. This is, for, this is verbatim. Babylon is referred to several times in Revelation as an actual city. Are you ready? Verbatim. And there is no reason to call it Rome or Catholicism. And there is no reason to call it Rome or Catholicism or something else, as many have done. Babylon was still a fairly important city at the time, at the time John wrote and would remain so for several more centuries. So why would he call it Babylon if it wasn't Babylon? <laughs> if he meant Rome, he would certainly have called it Rome. Paul did so frequently, and so did Luke. Babylon eventually fell mostly into ruins, though never entirely abandoned, and it will eventually be rebuilt to rival its former glory. See notes on Zechariah 5, 5-11. This city is now in Iraq, and the Iraqi government has indeed been working on its restoration for many years, with ambitions to make it a capital of Islam and a center of world influence. Eventually, the Vist will probably take over the whole region and make Babylon his own capital. It is ideally situated to be the global center of government, Religion, commerce, and communication, since it is very near to the actual geographical center of the world's land areas.
fighting up for Catholicism. There's no reason to believe that it's Rome or Catholicism. Yeah, hath God said? You might be saying, well, Brad, you're being hypocritical. You, you, uh, you, you said that if you had to, you would recommend the Schofield. Um, yeah, but Schofield doesn't try to hide up Rome. Okay? Like I said, like I said, I have this, I've had it for quite a while, um, I'm going to get rid of this. Um, I can't burn it around here, and throwing it out in the trash, someone might go through the trash and pick it up and uh, get poisoned by it. But yeah, 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 it's about Jerusalem, the third temple. That's where the Antichrist is going to go in and declare himself to be God. Okay? So, as far as the Henry Morris study Bible, um, get rid of it. Don't use it. Okay? Covering up for Rome. Yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, like I said, I, I just wanted to address this, uh, especially, especially about this piece of junk. This is a piece of junk. This is a piece of junk. Um... Covering up for the papacy? Oh, no, 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 no. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. So that's going to be it for this uh, quick little video. Don't, if you have the Henry Morris Study Bible, Get rid of it. Burn it if you can. Uh, do don't 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 seek the Lord. Pray unto the Lord, and He will guide you into all truth. Okay. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you do. Hope this helps you, and again, if you're using a Henry Morris Study Bible, don't. Okay, look at me. He's covering up for the Vatican. He's covering up for Rome. Danger, Will Robinson. Okay? Danger. Ah. Uh. But anyway, like I said, that's it for this video. Just wanted to make a very quick video warning you about the uh, Henry Morris Study Bible specifically. So, thank you very much for watching. If you do, I love you. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.